Please, whoever finds this, this damnable journal, I want you to understand something. I started out on my journey in the Z trying to be a good man, trying to learn what it was my father had seen and what had changed him. I wanted to be a true captain of the Z, but... <sighs> there are things that I have not told you. The time my soul was stolen by the Pentecost apes and I had to burn their habitat down to take it. The men, the men who I'd sold into that red honey nightmare. Prisoners. Thieves. Were the innocent that I had taken from the surface. Somehow, through the poison and the beasts, the nightmares and the madness, I had begun to lose myself. And as I stood at the precipice in London with that box of secrets that that damnable monkey emperor had given to me, I realized that perhaps I could no longer be amongst this world of people that I had known. My crew, my officers, Lyssa, we had all journeyed together. We had all seen the same things. Deep down I knew they felt the same way. Lyssa put her hand on my shoulder, the cute little thing. She was stamping on top of my magician's shoulders. She offered me solace and comfort in my decision. But I would not be brash. I laid the box down on the ship and ventured to meet with Noctis and Marina. Marina listened quietly as I laid down what would happen. I was going to give this box of secrets to the anarchists, and London would fall. I would be hated for all times. And if all things went well... The monkeys wouldn't have their way, either. I would take Lissa and the others, and we would find a new land. A new London we could start. She shook her head sadly. She'd known what it meant to fall in love with a Z-captain. For they were fools and charlatans. They were cowards and kings. The brave and the stupid. I had gained enough favor from the Dawn Acolytes that I could make a good life for her in the Grand Geode and Port Carnelian, if she so wished. I told her to look after my mother, and to look after Noctis, and gave her as much of my echoes as I could. Hopefully she would live peacefully. She at least agreed to look after my family. And then it was time to say goodbye to Noctis. With Lissa in tow, I visited Noctis. He had been so little when this journey had started, and now he was almost as big as Lissa, though still a toddler. I sat with him for a bit, and talked of my journeys across the Z, all the wonders I'd seen. The Z called to Noctis, too, and I knew it. My hope was that he would not claim to be one with the light, that he would not allow himself to be convinced he was a king or a savior, that he would embrace the dark and not fear it, that he would be only one thing. He would be Noctis, not my son but he would be himself. I told him that he and his mother would be going to visit the Dawn Machine, and that they would stay under their protection for a time, and that no matter what anyone said, I was the coward, the monster, and the traitor. Noctis didn't fully understand, I know, but I made sure to let him understand that I would not be coming back, and that his life was now his own. With Noctis, Marina, and my mother safely under the care of the Commodore of the Grand Geode, and the Dawn Acolytes protecting them, I visited the Council of Anarchists. The Clathermount Tattoo Parlor was my contact point. I met them. They brought me before their great calendar council, and they started to squirm and chortle and laugh in unadulterated glee at the secrets that the Monkey King was laying before them. There was no way to me to know. Just hearing those things, seeing them, was enough to burn one's eyes, and yet... And yet here they were, laid bare. The Admiralty had already been dealt a blow by the Dawn Acolytes as they tried to rule over London with the help of the voracious diplomat. Now there were fires in the streets. I had been kept in a tiny cage to prevent from being warned. True to their word, though, the anarchists let me out, with just enough time for my crew to have their ship ready, and for me to sail out on tomorrow's sword. London was behind me. Perhaps it would rebuild itself and become just as great as it once had, or it would remain fallen. It mattered little to me. I had forsaken my home, and entrusted my family to someone else. 
there was nothing left but my crew and the Z. And so, with a heavy heart, we sailed back to the Empire of Hands. I could join the great exodus of the Grand Emperor of Monkeys, but neither I nor my crew was quite so stupid as that. He had asked me to destroy an entire city for his hatred. He claimed that it was pity, that their scorn and anger was unwarranted. Yet that anger that the monkey emperor held, it was all too human. Whatever this thing was, it was not seeking equality or to stand above humanity. It was simply seeking its own ends. And so, with the blessings of the gods, of storm and of salt and of stone, my crew and I snuck on to the Zeppelin. It was easy enough. The Emperor had given us special accolades, after all, for we had done what no other human would do. And with that, we stole the soaring glory, the Zeppelin, and took off towards the uttermost east, heading in the same direction, as ironically as it could be, that my father had disappeared. The cries of the monkeys and the howls of the Emperor reached our ears. Lissa was there, just tugging on my shoulder. The magician had carried her once again. She asked if we were going someplace better. I told her yes, though to be honest I didn't know. Either way, this journal has no more purpose for me. I've decided that as we sail over London before heading out to the east, I'm going to drop it. Whoever finds this, please understand. Whatever you may have heard of Captain Solaris, whatever lies, whatever truths, know that I did explore the Z, and I started out as a man with ambition. I had hoped to change the world for the better. But the world changes by its own whims, not by the whims of men. Whatever you can do, you should simply try and live your life your own way. I did that towards the very end. And, though I am a traitor, hated in London, I have only a few small regrets. I regret that I could not take my family with me towards this new land we're heading. Perhaps starvation, mutiny, or even death await me. But there is no choice for me now. I am going to the east on this Zeppelin. Me and my crew, we're going together. <laughs>